Today I'm going to be working on a 2002 MR2 Spider. The truth. All right, so I finally got the old seat from my Z. Um, I'm going to be putting it in the MR2. Uh, gonna want to clean it up first. I'll show you guys uh, how dirty it really is in just a second. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be cleaning this thing off. I'm gonna vacuum all like the big chunks off and then I'm gonna be hitting with a steam cleaner. Uh, some of these little pads are removable too. So I'll be taking them off and really hitting them really good as well. Most gonna be taking off this seat bracket as well. Uh, that bracket is for a 370Z, so it will not fit in the MR2. Well, first things first, let's get to cleaning this. All right, now I got all the pads taken off of the actual seat. You can see underneath where the pads were, there's a lot more dirt and debris and stuff. It's pretty damn nasty. So let's go ahead and get that cleaned up right quick. All right, so this is actually my first time using this thing. Uh, I got it back for Christmas, uh, which was a couple months ago now, and never got around to using it. Uh, so we're gonna figure it out together. I've got the instruction book open, looking through it right now. But I'll put the link for this thing down in the description. I got it off of Amazon. So I'll let you know how it goes, and uh, yeah, go from there. All right, so I read over the instructions. It says when this little orange light goes off, it's ready to use. Uh, the red light just shows that it's on, but first one I'm gonna try is this kind of this wide uh, steam attachment here. Uh, I don't know what else to call it, but that way I'm just gonna straight down steam this thing whenever it's ready to go. Now I am starting with these side bolster ones, just because I have some spares. That way if I ruin these things, uh, I at least have brand new ones I could use, but I'm gonna try and clean these ones up the best I can. That way I can keep the new ones for the passenger seat whenever I get that. Just want to say again, this is my first time using this thing, so I am no professional on this, but just kind of showing you how I'm doing it, and maybe it'll help, maybe it won't. Okay, Bells?
as you can see, it just added some upholstery cleaner. I'm gonna see how that does after hitting it with the steam. What I really wanna see is this thing, hopefully the color of it changes. It's kind of a, I don't know how well it picks it up on camera. But it's definitely kind of a grayish color now where it should be more of a white as you can sort of see the sparkle right there. I don't know how much of a color difference you can see on the camera. But this one's definitely more white and this one's definitely more gray just because your knee's kind of hanging right over that. So it's going to collect all the dirt and nastiness from the backside of your legs. Well, it's definitely looking a bit better. Not quite as white as I was hoping it would come out to be. May have to do it a few more times. It's pretty damp as it is right now too, just because of the steamer. So, we'll see how it turns out. I'm gonna let it dry out for a bit and go from there. I'm gonna be doing the seat here in just a minute as well. Now I have switched it up a bit, see if this might work better, but I'm using the bristle side and I'm spraying it down with some tough stuff. Uh, I got this from my local automotive store and I already sprayed it. It left like a white foam. It dried because it's been a few minutes, but uh, it's still wet to the touch and everything like that. But I'm going to go ahead and hit it with the steam and we'll see how that does. It's looking pretty good. The, the Sparco lettering coming back to being white, so that's what I'm hoping for. May hit the other ones up again. Uh, they get pretty soggy. So, well, not too soggy, but definitely damp. So, I'll let them dry out for a bit. I might be doing this seat here next when I let these guys dry. Here's a really quick comparison. This side I hit with uh, the brush and the, the tough stuff. This side I just hit with steam. You can see it's definitely a bit more gray on the letterings. So, I might be going over it here in just a minute and trying it again. All right, now I'm gonna go back over it one more time with the vacuum, just get up all that dirt and stuff that the uh, steam cleaner kicked up. So vacuum out the whole seat and we'll see how it looks from there. All right, well I let the fabric side dry. I'm gonna go ahead and take off these four Allen bolts that hold the bracket onto the seat. And then we're gonna be wiping down the whole seat, to clean it up really good. All right, so what I've been doing to clean these up even better is after I hit them with the steam cleaner, I go ahead and vacuum them up too. The steam cleaner seems to extract all the dirt and dog hair and everything up to the surface. And then I go ahead and vacuum it back off and it seems to be cleaning them up really well. I've done them all about two times now. I may do a third time, but I definitely need to let them dry. So I think I'm either gonna leave them out or if I need them done a little bit faster, I might toss them in the dryer and just let them like tumble. But I'm not gonna put heat on them because I don't wanna mess them up too much. Um, but after they're all dry, I'm gonna go ahead and put them back on the seat. And then we'll be getting the seat into the car soon. All right, now it's time to mount up our new bracket on the bottom of this thing. So this box came for me in the mail. It should be the bracket for the seat. Let's open it up.
And here it is, our planted seat bracket. Here's the part number for the driver's side seat bracket. I'll leave the link for it down in the description. Next, we're gonna be taking out the four 14 millimeter bolts. There's one here, one up over here. Maybe two more behind the seat. Three, and fourth one should be underneath this little plastic cover right here. If I can pop it open. I'll get it open in a minute, but it's right there. Took some fighting, but I got the little plastic cover off, and there's our bolt. Now that all four of them are out, we're gonna go ahead and start getting our seat out of there. Now I just tilted the seat back, but it has this connector here we're gonna have to disconnect. This is what tells the car if your seatbelt's been buckled or not. Once it's unplugged, we can go ahead and lift the seat out of the car very carefully. With the old seat out, it's a perfect opportunity to go ahead and clean up the floorboard where the seat was sitting. Now we are reusing this seat buckle. So what you're gonna have to do is cut the, um, the zip tie that was holding it to here and get this guy to pop out. You should be able to squeeze it with a pair of needle nose. And then once that's out, we're gonna feed it up through, get it out through here. Well, that was a bit more of a struggle than I wanted it to be. What I ended up having to do is take out two bolts, one that went right up here, and the other one that went right here. And it was able to release the, the sliding rail from the actual cushion itself and then I can move it out enough to get this connector out. Now we're gonna be taking out this little screw right in here. And behind it is the bolt that holds in our seat belt bracket. I'm gonna be using a 14 millimeter wrench and mine are ratcheting. So I'm gonna put my ratcheting end on and take it off that way. This is a 14 millimeter wrench I'm gonna be using to take off the bolt that holds the seat belt connector on. Now that we get that out, we can put it on our new seat bracket. Now because our new seat bracket doesn't have the reds on it or anything, the bolt just kind of flops in and out of there. So what I'm gonna have to do is find a nut to go on the back side of this and probably a washer and a lock washer just to hold it in place whenever I reattach the seat buckle to our new bracket. Now that I got the floor decently clean, I'm gonna go ahead and test fit the seat with the bracket in here to make sure I like the seating position. Now currently I run a spacer and then the washer, then the Allen key. So what I'll do is I'll put the bracket right here between the washer and the spacer just to give the seat a little bit of extra room on height. It's about maybe half an inch or so. Next we're going to go ahead and mount the seat right onto our new bracket. So I got these two bolts that go on the back side of the seat to go in, but the front ones are about under here on both sides. So. I'm gonna be measuring things out, test fitting the seat, see how it feels before I commit to making new holes. Cause I'd hate to put a hole and then find out that it's not a good seating position for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this as is. I put the little spacers behind here to keep the distance between the bracket and the seat. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and test fit it in the car, see if I like how it is and go from there. So as I have it in here, it's pretty much butting right up against the center console here. And this hole does not align. So what I'm gonna have to do is remount it on the bracket, maybe shift it over this way a bit so the bracket can go that way and see if that'll work better. So what I'm doing is making some small pilot holes. I'm gonna walk it up to the size that I need. Um, this one's a little bit close to the manufactured slot right here. So kind of nervous about that one, but we'll see how that turns out. The other one's right here. It's got plenty of metal around it. Not too worried about that one though. Now that I got my new holes drilled, we're gonna go ahead and put the seat back on with whatever size spacers we need to put on there to make sure it clears the metal bracket to the bottom of the seat and go from there. Now that I got the bracket mounted to the bottom of the seat, we're gonna go ahead and put our seat belt buckle back on. 
Now before I tighten down the seat bracket, I went ahead and ran my cable for the seat belt buckle. Um, but next I'm gonna be mounting it right over here. All right, now we got this mounted up and I still have some mobility in the seat belt buckle itself. I wanna go ahead and weigh this seat compared to the original and see the difference. So the stock seat weighs 32 pounds. Now to compare it to the aftermarket seat. And the aftermarket seat weighs 26 pounds. Now that the seat's in place, I'm gonna go ahead and plug in the seatbelt connector. Alrighty, now I'm gonna be installing the four bolts that hold the actual seat to the car. Uh, I'm gonna be putting them in loosely. Remember there's two up front and there's two in the back. Uh, because my seat's not on rails anymore, uh, it's gonna be kind of difficult to get to these back two, but with a long extension and kind of a swivel head, I should be able to get to them. And they are all 14 millimeter. Now I also had to employ the use of my 14 millimeter ratcheting wrench to help tighten up some of these bolts on this seat, but it is finally in. Um, it does just barely make contact with the door here whenever I open and close it, but it's not really a whole lot and I'm not terribly worried about it. I think it just bumps the fabric right here. So I'm okay with that, um, but if you're going to this same setup, I'd be mindful of that. So I know some uh, SCAA regulations don't let you have it touching the door, but I'm not gonna be taking mine auto across anytime soon. So I'm good with that at the moment, but it's definitely in there really well. So I'm happy. Uh, and again, I have the use of my um, seat belt there, so I can still use a stock seat belt to buckle up with. If you have any questions or comments about how I installed it in the car, please leave them down in the comment section below and I'll try and answer them as soon as I can. Hope this video helped. If you enjoyed any of the background music that's in any of these videos, check out the artist SoundCloud. I put a link in the description.